Work started on the scheme in 1969 and construction commenced with the full backing of a government which had faced very difficult drought situations. Geological surveys confirmed the suitability of the location for a big dam. A collection of drill cores provided the engineers with a picture of the underlying rock formations. A network of roads throughout the area opened the location to the heavy and complex machinery of modern civil engineering construction. The Board of Works has accumulated a solid background of expertise in tunnelling, not only on this project, but also in tunnelling in the southeastern and Dandenong Valley trunk sewers and part of the tunnels under the city for Melbourne's underground rail loop. During the early stages of tunnelling, rock was removed by drilling and blasting. The total length of the main Thompson Tunnel will be more than 35 kilometres. Rock for the construction of the main dam, as well as the coffer dam and a saddle dam, is blasted from the walls of the valley near the dam site. Upstream, the completion of the coffer dam has enabled the river to be diverted via a tunnel which bypasses the dam site. This permits the river to flow without interruption while the foundations for the earth and rock fill dam are prepared and the embankment built. A mile crane is ready to lift a sluice gate which will permit the water to bypass the dam construction site. For board chairman Alan Croxford and Hal Jackson, senior resident engineer, this occasion marks a significant step in securing Melbourne's future water supply. Mr Croxford performs the ceremony by operating the mobile crane and lifting the sluice gate and water enters the upstream portal of the diversion tunnel. The river resumes its course downstream from the construction site.